is Go Beyond, the teaching and preaching ministry with Pastor Michael Eurisha. Michael is an international speaker, songwriter, and the senior pastor of the Judah Ministries International Worship Center, located in McKeesport, Pennsylvania. If you are ever in the greater Pittsburgh area, please come and visit us. Let's now join in with the Judah Ministries praise team at the Worship Center. Hallelujah. Come on, let's stand up on our feet. Righteousness being restored
We're going to continue in our, uh, in our study of the book of Galatians. If you want to open your book up, open your Bible up to Galatians chapter 3, and we're going to read there. So we're continuing our study of this letter that Paul wrote. And much of last message and today deals a lot with religion versus relationship. So this study of the book of Galatians is a very good doctrinal teaching concerning grace and the law. Grace and the law. And how many of you know there are sects of Christianity that are way, way heavy on the law? You know, then there's other ones that are way, way heavy on the grace. How many of you know the Bible gives us a balance in there? Come on, somebody say amen for me. So we're Galatians chapter 3, and let's pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for your word today. We thank you for your revelation today. Father, we thank you for what you're doing in us and through us, Lord God. Father, we ask that in Jesus' name you would just open our hearts today. Father, till up the soil in our hearts that we might receive from you this day, Holy Spirit. Teach us, great teacher, that we might grow in your grace, that we might grow in your knowledge and in your wisdom, Lord, that we might walk in the faith walk that you've called us to, my Lord. Father, let it come into our lives and bring forth fruit, even that of a hundredfold. And we'll be forever grateful and say thank you in the matchless holy name of Yeshua, Jesus, our Messiah. And everybody said amen. 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 So we're at Galatians chapter 3. We're going to read verses 1 through 14. And Paul writes, You foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? Before your very eyes, Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed as crucified. I would just like to learn this one thing from you. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by believing what you heard? Are you so foolish after beginning by the means of the Spirit? Are you now trying to finish by means of the flesh? Have you experienced so much in vain if it is really, uh, if it is, I'm sorry, if it really was in vain? Verse 5, so again I ask, does God give you his spirit and work miracles among you by the works of the law or by believing what you heard? So also Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. Understand then that those who have faith are the children of Abraham. Is there anybody in this house today? Let me see your hand if you have faith. Then you are a child of Abraham. Well, what does that mean, Pastor? Well, you get the Abrahamic covenant and the Abrahamic blessing. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Verse 8, Scripture foresaw that God would justify the Gentiles by faith and announced the gospel in advance to Abraham. All nations... All nations will be blessed through you. So those who rely on faith are blessed along with Abraham, the man of faith. Verse 10, for all who rely, uh, rely on the works of the law are under a curse. As it is written, cursed is everyone who does not continue to do everything written in the book of the law. Now, come on, we talked about that a little bit last week. Uh, is there anybody that has, you know, even kept the Big Ten, right? The Ten Commandments, right? If we could keep one of them, thou shall not lie would be doing good. But, you know, how many of you at least broke that one, right? Uh, come on, somebody. Verse 11, clearly no one who relies on the law is justified before God because the righteous will live by faith. The law is not based on faith. On the contrary, it says the person who does these things will live by them. Christ mm, redeemed us from the curse of the law. Oh, that's real good. I'm going to go ahead and just have to read that for myself again. Mm, I enjoyed that line. Christ 
redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone who is hung on a pole or on a tree. He redeemed us in order that the blessing given to Abraham might come to the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, so that by faith we might receive the promise of the Spirit. Now, in this same chapter that we read in the last message, Paul is asking the Galatians as well as you and I, after receiving the Spirit of God, are we now trying to satisfy God through the flesh? Are we now trying to satisfy God by obeying the law? Are we now trying to satisfy God and secure our salvation by our good works? Hmm. So the letter to the church in Galatia is basically addressing this question. How can mortal man of a sinful nature, how can we come to God uh, or be justified unto an immortal God who is holy by nature. We learned last week, or last message, that by faith of the atoning blood of Jesus Christ, we are justified. Come on, if you're justified, somebody thank God in here. The word justified in the Greek, dikeo, meaning to be declared righteousness to be declared righteous justified you are declared righteous when the judge slams the gavel down and declares come on somebody that you are declared not guilty you are free to go it's over there's no retrial there's no double jeopardy these charges cannot be brought back up. Come on, we'll preach to somebody this morning. Uh, I don't care how much the accuser of the brethren wants to uh, scream and yell and say, you're no good, you're no good, you're not saved, you're a dirty, filthy rag. Least, listen, Jesus declared on the cross at Calvary to tell us die. It's paid. Come on, that's an accounting term. It's paid in full. There's no further payment required. There's no delayed sentencing. There's no community service. There's nothing. It's finished. You're free to go. Somebody give God a praise. And so the church in Galatia, as well as many churches, Today, in an attempt to obtain salvation or secure your salvation, they try to mix the grace of God with merit or good works. In other words, you're saved by grace and you have to dress a certain way. You're saved by grace and you have to abstain from certain foods at certain times of year. You're saved by grace and you have to do door-to-door -door evangelism. You're saved by grace, and you have to pray four or five times uh, today. You're, come on, some of y'all remember this now. If you're saved, you're saved, and you cannot go to the movie house. Come on, I know some of y'all were brought up under that. Now, now, let me balance this out for you, Judah. There's nothing wrong with praying five or ten times a day. As a matter of fact, Paul wrote that we should pray continually, without ceasing. There's nothing wrong with dressing appropriately. We should dress appropriately. Uh, there's nothing wrong with fasting or good, fun recreation. There's nothing wrong with going fishing once in a while or hitting a golf ball around. There's nothing wrong with these things. Uh, come on, somebody. There's nothing wrong huh, with being mindful of your cussing mouth. I'm just trying to help somebody along here today. There's nothing wrong with watching what websites you peruse. But listen to me. I want to free somebody this morning. Your salvation is not 
based on how well you do these things because if that's the case come on somebody we'd all be in trouble do i got a witness in this house my my no 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 listen faith plus works is bondage it's false teaching just as paul was declaring to the letter to the church of Galatia when he said that kind of a gospel is really no gospel at all. It's grace alone, by faith alone, in Christ alone, period. End of story. So pastor, now that I'm saved, can I just go on and live any old way I want to? We're going to discuss that in, in a couple of weeks, but let me just say this in short. My Bible says in Romans chapter 6 that grace does not give me a license to sin. Oh, but God loves me with an unending love. And he, wait, 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 hold up, hold up. Watch, let me, let me give you a parallel here. My wife loves me with an unending love. She'll die for me. She does whatever I need. She's always there. She'll never leave me or forsake. Does that give me the right to cheat on my woman? Come on, somebody. Just because our Father has an unending love for you does not give you the right to prostitute your life with other gods. My, my, my. So let's talk about the word sanctification. We're still reviewing a little bit from last message. The word sanctification in the Greek is hagiadso, in short meaning to make holy or to be set apart uh, for something special. If you've been justified and now you're sanctified, you've been declared righteous and now you're set apart for a special calling. You're set apart for a special a purpose. You're set apart for a special anointing or a, a special appointing for the glory of God the Father. That's hagiadso, being ju uh, uh, sanctified. So once justified, you now begin the sanctification pro uh, uh, process. So this grace plus merit that equals justification is what really really led to the Protestant Reformation in the 16th century uh, with Martin Luther and his 95 propositions against the Catholic Church. In Galatians chapter 1, uh, Paul addresses that if a gospel is preached, anything else except by grace alone, through faith alone, and Christ alone, I'm going to say it again, it's really no gospel at all. So let's take a look this morning at the five solas, the five solas. If I could have that slide up there, fellas. These five solas are the five pillars of the Christian faith. They're immovable doctrinal truths, and that's why they're called pillars. When you knock out a pillar, the entire structure of a building falls. Is somebody with me? All right. So the first pillar is sola scriptura. Sola scriptura, meaning scripture alone. This pillar affirms the biblical doctrine and the Bible alone is the sole authority for all matters of faith and practice. It's not, listen, it's not scripture in some church rules. It's not scripture and the watchtower. Come on, somebody. It's not scriptural or some other type of a publication. It's uh, not scripture and some denominational bylaws. It's not scripture and a committee vote. Thy word huh, is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Jesus says, man does not live by bread alone, but by what? Every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. As a matter of fact, to quote Jesus, Jesus said, it is 
written, graphe in the Greek, the, my God, the word of God has been settled in heaven. Heaven and earth may pass away, but the word of God shall never pass away. Honey, it's not going anywhere and it's not changing for you or for me. The word of God has been established. Come on, somebody in the house, thank God for his word. <laughs> Hebrews 4 and 12, for the word of God is alive and active sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to the dividing of soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and the attitudes of the heart. Jeremiah 23 and 29 says this, Is not my word like fire, ha, declares the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks a rock to pieces? How many of you in this house have been broken by that hammer? Woo! I know that hammer's come upside my head quite a few times. That hammer's come down and broke my heart quite, come on somebody. It's broken me. The word of God breaks us. We need to be thankful for the breaking of the hammer. We need to be thankful for the breaking of the word of God in our lives. So scripture and scripture alone is the standard by which all teachings and doctrines of the church must be measured. As Martin Luther so eloquently stated, when asked to recant his teachings, he said this, and I quote, unless I am convinced by scripture and plain reason, I do not accept the authority of the popes and councils, for they have contradicted each other. My conscience is captive to the word of God. My conscience, come on, this is going to help you, is captive to the word of God, I cannot and I will not recant anything. For to go against conscience is neither right nor safe. God help me, amen. 2 Timothy 3 and 16, all scripture, somebody say all scripture, is God breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. Listen, your Bible does not say God's word and man's opinion. Let me make my last point concerning sola scriptura and regarding God's prophetic word. In the book of Revelation, chapter 22, verses 18 and 19, you could go look this up later. The Bible says about God's word, it says, if you add to it, God will add those plagues to you. If you remove from it, he's going to remove you from the Lamb's book of life. Just let me say it this way. Don't mess with God's word. Don't play with the word of God, somebody. Those are very serious consequences. And you can see God is extremely, extremely serious about his word. So sola scriptura, scripture alone, is the authority in our lives. The second pillar is sola Christus, meaning in Christ alone. This affirms the biblical doctrine that salvation is found in Christ alone and that his sinless life and substitutionary atonement alone, come on, are sufficient for our justification and reconciliation to God the Father. For the gospel has not been preached if Christ's substitutionary work is not declared and if faith in Christ and his work is not solicited. If not, we're just speaking babble, not Bible. But it's very sad today in the 21st century that many, many full gospel churches rarely, if ever, even preach Christ crucified anymore. There's a lot of motivational speaking going on. A lot of feel-good talks going on. There's a lot of little storytelling and a lot of little things going on. But I'm here to tell somebody there's also a lot of heresy going along with it. But the crucifixion of Jesus Christ is 
The redemption. It's the centerpiece of our redemption. You remove the crucifixion. You remove our redemption. We might as well pack up shop and go home. I, I, Luke, Jesus said in Luke 22, he said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. We're talking about Sula Christus, Christ alone. And when we talk about Christ alone, we have to talk about his blood alone. Because listen, church, the blood of bulls and goats couldn't satisfy Millions of gallons of blood over centuries in sacrifice could not achieve what just six pints of blood achieved on one Passover night outside Jerusalem on an old rugged cross. Oh, pastor, we can't talk about blood in the church. Oh, that's too gory. That's, uh, that's too offensive to talk about blood. Are you kidding me? Have you watched your television in the last 20 years? You want to talk about gory. You want to talk about offensive. I watch very little television. As a matter of fact, our, our family watches very little television as a whole. I think it was last week. Every once in a while, we sit around and enjoy Family Feud. Anybody ever watch that? You all kind of like play along? Steve Harvey's a blast, man. He's, that guy is crazy, right? But we watch it, and it's on from like 7 to 7.30, 7.30 to 8. And, you know, so the show ended, and the next thing, I mean, it just, you know how they do nowadays, they just roll right into the next show. So the next show rolls on, and we're, we're just kind of like sitting there watching. Shows these two young guys coming out of a school or something, early 20s, late teens, 19 to 22, 23 years old, coming out, and they're having a little lover's quarrel. So they begin to dialogue one with another. Aren't you feeling what I'm feeling Come on, so I don't even know what the show is. You know, so they're struggling. The next thing, you have two young boys, 8 o'clock at night, coming through my television bo box, locking lips in a passionate kiss. You want to talk about offensive? My God says that is an abomination. Come on, somebody. Oh, but pastor, please don't talk about Jesus and going to the cross. Oh, that might be offensive. Well, listen, the Bible says that Jesus is going to be offensive. You can put your television on any time. Day or night, you want to see something offensive. My, my, my. Listen, you don't want to hear about the blood. You don't want to hear about the crucifixion. You don't want to hear about the price that Jesus paid. Honey, you got to find yourself another preacher because I will forever preach Christ crucified as long as there is breath in this body. This morning we're talking about good doctrine. Somebody say good doctrine. 2 Timothy 4, 3 and 3 says this. For the time will come. Oh my, I like that, Pastor. I'm going to rephrase. For the time has come. When people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they'll gather around them a great number of teachers. Let me say that again. A great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. I'm not here to scratch your ear this morning. We're talking about Sulus Christus, Christ alone. 
Jesus said in John 14 about himself, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No man, no man comes to the Father. No man goes through heaven. No man comes to the Father into the glory. No man comes to the Father but by me. Jesus didn't say that it's me in another way. It's not Jesus and or somebody else. It's not Jesus and or something else. It's sola Christos. It's Christ alone. There's salvation found in no other name under heaven whereby we must be saved except the name of Jesus Christ. Christ. So listen, Judah, there is no other name. There is no other blood. There is no other death. And there is certainly no other resurrection except that of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's Christ and Christ alone. Sola Christus. Come on, somebody. Give God a praise in the house. Pastor Michael will be right back with today's message. If you would like to hear or watch other messages by Pastor Michael on your computer or electronic device, or learn more about our ministry, please visit our website at www.judaministries.net and click on Go Beyond. Now let's get back to today's message. Sola. Gloria. Salvation by grace alone. Scripture alone. Christ alone. God's grace alone. This affirms the biblical doctrine that salvation is by God's grace alone and that we are rescued from his wrath by his grace alone. God's grace in Christ is not merely necessary but it is the sole efficient cause of salvation. This grace is the supernatural work of the Holy Spirit that brings us to Christ by releasing us from our bondage to sin and raising us up from spiritual death to spiritual life. Listen, my brother. Listen, my sister. Jesus didn't come uh, just to make uh, bad people Good people. No, no. Jesus came to make dead people alive people. Yay, God. Here's a good acronym for grace. If you guys could put that slide up there. Grace. G-R-A-C-E. Standing for God's riches at Christ's expense. You see, grace means, it means receiving something that you did not deserve. See, I didn't deserve a beautiful wife and beautiful children, huh? But grace said, oh, yeah, 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 that's okay. That's grace. Gra you, you know, people don't say, well, you don't deserve this. You, you don't, no, no, no. Grace says, oh, yeah, you do. Grace says, yes, I don't deserve, listen, to live in a mansion with streets paved with gold. But grace said, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Hallelujah. You do. Oh, come on, somebody. My, my, my. Yeah, I don't deserve, listen. I don't deserve to stand here as a shepherd over a beautiful flock of people. But God's grace, somebody said, yes, you do. <laughs> Judah, I'm not boasting in myself because whatever I have or whatever I've accomplished in my life, my accomplishment is in the Lord. My boast is in the Lord. You see, it's by God's grace that we even have salvation. Come on, Ephesians 2, y'all know this. For it's by grace that you're saved. Through faith, not of yourself. It's the gift of God, not by works, so that nobody can boast. Thank God for his grace this morning, somebody. Grace. 
receiving what I do not deserve. I deserve hellfire. But now I want to talk to you about mercy. Nicole sang the song. I deserve hellfire because of the life I lived. But mercy said no. Because of my lying, because of my cheating, because of my uh, carousing, uh, because the law said go to hell. But mercy said, oh, hold the train. Ah, uh, not so fast. Uh, uh, because of my stealing, because of my uh, carousing, because of my gambling, because of my cheating, because of my, go ahead and fill in your own blank there. I deserve eternal damnation and separation from God forever. But mercy said, hold the train, not so fast. You see, Jesus, our high priest, presented his own blood on the mercy seat so that we were once a people not having mercy. But today, by his blood, we've obtained mercy. Come on, somebody. Thank God for his mercy. So grace means that we receive things that we did not deserve. Mercy means we don't receive the things that we do deserve. All in our favor. Oh, I'm trying to tell somebody, we serve a good God. Full of grace, I need it. Full of mercy, I need it. Oh, Jesus. My God. Hey, shut up. Scripture alone. Christ alone, grace alone, sola fide, faith alone. If I could have that slide back up there, thank you. Salvation by faith alone. This affirms the biblical doctrine that justification is by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. It is by faith in Jesus Christ and his righteousness is imputed to us as the only. Hmm. It's the only possible satisfaction of God's perfect justice. How many of you, you may have even said this, you know, that's not fair. In any situation. That's just, God's not fair. Honey, you don't want him to be fair. Where's the justice? Honey, you don't want the justice. Mm. Now let me clear that a little bit. I don't just want to let that hang out there. I'm not talking about corrupt things that go on here in earth. There needs to be justice. Come on, somebody. You read Romans 13. God has set up the authority structure. Come on, somebody. There needs to be justice. You murder somebody, you need to pay the price here. Nothing wrong with that. That's right. That's right. You know, you steal somebody's belongings. No, 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 no. You, you need to pay the price. I'm not talking there. I'm talking on another level, somebody. I'm talking eternally, somebody. Thank God. Hey! <laughs> Thank God. So it's by faith alone. So first of all, the teacher, the, the, the scriptures teach us. In Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, it says, Without faith, impossible. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Without faith, it's impossible to satisfy a holy God. 
So that is where our salvation begins and ends, is with faith. It is not faith, I'm going to go there again, and witnessing door to door in your white shirt. It's not faith, and pardon the cliche, helping a hundred old ladies across the street. It's not faith in reading your Bible 24-7. It's not faith in singing in the choir. It's not faith in going to church every day and lighting candles. Romans 10 and 9 states that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be Say, come on, somebody. Your heart and your mouth are connected, church. Out of the abundance of our heart, our mouth speaks. So it's by faith and faith alone. Where does faith come from? My word tells me that faith cometh by hearing. Huh? You're hearing what? The word of the Lord. Faith cometh by hearing. And hearing the word of the Lord. Now you could hear that a couple different ways. You could hear that through the foolishness of the preaching of the gospel. By a preacher. But you could also be in the middle of the night and hear a voice. You could be watching TV and hear a preacher preaching. Or you could be out in the middle of a jungle somewhere and hear a voice. The Bible declares this, that it's God's will that all should be saved and come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Not wanting any to perish. Our Father will find a way to speak to the heart of man. I don't have time to speak testimonies. Pastor Andy could tell you testimonies in the middle of the jungle where there was no internet, no TV, no radio, but yet somehow they heard a voice calling them. God's word will go forth and accomplish what it's set forth to do. Hey, po shatalo satoto. Hey, hey. How, how do we pray on this platform through a camera and people halfway across the world get saved? It's not anything from here. It's all the word of God. Somebody. The word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. My, 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 my. Pastor Michael will be right back with today's message. If you would like to hear or watch other messages by Pastor Michael on your computer or electronic device, or learn more about our ministry, please visit our website at www judaministries.net and click on Go Beyond. Now let's get back to today's message. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing of the Word of God. Our faith came by somebody sharing the Word of God with us and the Holy Spirit revealed Himself. We then made a decision to believe or not to believe. Is there somebody in this house got a witness to that? Did somebody share the gospel with you at some point? They spoke, they spoke, they spoke. Then, oh God. Something started uh, stirring around. Oh, I don't know. What is that? I don't know. What, they, what are they talking about? Let me go look at the scripture myself. Let me do a little stuff. And that, that spirit, that voice uh, kept calling you, calling you by name, 
come wooing you by name. It's his kindness, oh my God, that leads us to repent. Oh, and he would say, honey, I love you. I know where you're at right now. You're in the, in the gutter right there. But honey, I love you right where you are. And you heard the voice of God. You said, hey, I tried all this. There's nobody that can help me here. God, save me. You heard the voice of the Lord. It was by the power of the Holy Spirit. You put your faith, you put your trust. Come on, we talked about this last, I'm gonna go ahead and preach a little bit here. Listen, we talked about that a little bit last week. The moment you cried out, God, save me. Justified. You didn't have to go to a Bible study class. You didn't have to go to a seminary. You didn't have to learn the ABCs of salvation. You didn't need to know John 3.16. You didn't have to put on a polyester suit and a tie. You didn't have to go out and buy yourself a big church hat. Come on, I'm going to preach. Justified, declared righteous. If you've been declared righteous, come on, put your hands together and praise our God. Hey! Woo! Romans 10, how then can they call on the one they have not believed in? How can they believe? We're talking about faith. How can they believe in the one whom they've not heard? And how can they hear without somebody preaching? And how can they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring. Come on, somebody. We're bringing good news here today. That's why. Listen. That's why we travel the world either by jet or the internet to proclaim the available salvation by grace alone, through faith alone, and Christ alone, so that somebody would believe. My, my. Last pillar. Soli Dio Gloria. Meaning, to God's glory alone. Scripture alone. Christ alone, grace alone, faith alone, for God's glory alone. All that we do, all that we are, are for the glory of God and God alone. This affirms the biblical doctrine that salvation is of God and has been accomplished by God for His glory and His glory alone. It affirms that as Christians, we must glorify Him always. We must live our entire lives before the face of God under the authority of God and His glory alone. Colossians 1 and 16 says, you can write these down and read them later, for by Him all things were created, things in heaven, Things in earth, visible, the invisible, all created by God, whether thrones or powers, rulers or authorities, all things were created by Him and for Him. Philippians 2 and 13, for it is God who works in you both to will and to do His good pleasure. So you see, Judah, this life we live is neither for ourselves, nor is it for the local church, nor for any ministry, but solely Deo Gloria, for the glory of God and God alone. Paul said it this way in Philippians 1 and 21, for me, ha. Huh, here it is, simple. To live is for Christ. Yes. To die, it just gets better. 
To live is for Christ. To die is gain. If you're living your life here on earth trying to get all the gusto you can get, my friend, you're missing it. Jesus said, I've come to give you life. You haven't even realized life until you've come to Jesus. Come on, sir. listen, I, I, know, I know some of y'all in here. I know your testimony. I know what kind of rock God found you under. Come on, somebody. You know, we, we all spent some time in some pretty dark areas. But you haven't even begun to live life until you come to Jesus. I've come to give you life and that more abundantly. God has come to do his will in us and through us. And the sooner we learn to submit ourselves to the Spirit of God and try and stop trying to pursue Michael's agenda. Seek ye the kingdom of God and its righteousness. All this other, it'll be added unto you. Our lives need to be focused on seek ye first the kingdom of God. Now that doesn't mean everybody should be in a ministry full time. However, if you're saved, if you're blood bought, if you're filled with the Holy Ghost, you're by default in ministry full time. Come on somebody. You're by default in his service full time. Whether it's raising a godly family, running a godly business, or working as a godly employee, Wherever you find yourself, that's your mission field. So whatever your life is, it should be lived solely, Dio Gloria, for God's glory and God's glory alone. So let me wrap it up. These are the five solas. Scripture alone. Christus, Christ alone. Grace alone, sola fide, faith alone, and soli dio gloria, to God's glory alone. This is what came out of the Protestant Reformation in the sixth, uh, 16th century. We're saved by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. Our spiritual standard is scripture alone, and our lives are to glorify God alone. So if you're thankful for his word. If you're thankful for the faith that he's given you, come on somebody, to believe. If you're thankful for his grace, if you're thankful for Jesus Christ, if you're thankful for the glory of God, somebody put their hands together and give our God a great big praise in his house. This is Michael Eurisha, the senior pastor at the Judah Ministries International Worship Center. And I'm Darla Quinterly Eurisha, and we hope that you enjoyed the service. If you're ever in the greater Pittsburgh area, please feel free to come and join us for worship. Our church is located at 525 Market Street, McKeesport, Pennsylvania, 15132. Our services are Sunday morning at 1030 a.m. If you live in the McKeesport area and when you would like van transportation, simply call our church office at 412-672-6000. And when you come, we want you to feel at home. Our congregants come in a variety of styles. Whether you'd like to wear your Sunday's best or your favorite pair of blue jeans, we welcome you. And don't forget, visit our website, judaministries.net. That's judaministries.net. You could read more about our ministry or upcoming events. You could download the audio files or listen to messages or even watch videos of previous messages. And again, we thank you, and we look forward to seeing you soon. God bless. Proclaim the gospel 